formed in 1983 in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. The initial members included Brett Michaels on vocals and rhythm guitar, Ricky Rocket on drums, Bobby Dahl on bass, and CC DeVille on guitar. This band has made a lot of songs that are very popular at the time. Their ballad hit, Every Rose Has Its Thorn, was one of their best hits. This is Poison, one of the best glam, hair metal bands at the time. In this video I will reveal some shocking and tragic facts that happened to the members of this band. I hope you guys are entertained. So, check this out. The sex tape of Brett Michaels was steeled and distributed. Brett Michaels has enlisted the help of a private detective to investigate into the causes of the growing threats to his safety. In the course of a few months in 1996, according to Michaels, his Nashville home was set on fire, after which he discovered that his dog had been killed and that someone had tampered with his truck, causing a tire to come off as he was driving and all of the lug nuts to disappear. the purpose of each and every one of these attempts on his life and property. Intimidation and retaliation for his unwillingness to sell tapes he had formerly recorded with his now ex-girlfriend, Baywatch actress Pamela Anderson, were what Michaels believed were happening. Nevertheless, in 1998, a business by the name of Internet Entertainment Group publicly unveiled a commercial video that featured extensive footage of Michaels and Anderson's private interactions. Michaels may have been the one who stole and released the footage, he didn't authorize the film and, according to his attorney, spent $100,000 attempting to stop its distribution. C.C. DeVille was spoiled up. Despite C.C. DeVille's trademark guitar skills fueling the band's sound and popularity, the members of Poison ultimately had enough of him after years of unreliability, onstage altercations, and substance abuse problems. Richie Kotzen, a guitarist, took over for DeVille after Swallow This Live's 1991 release by Poison. However, DeVille didn't leave without a fight. Brett Michaels, lead vocalist of Poison, appeared as a guest on Lon Friend's nationally syndicated hard rock radio talk show Pirate Radio Saturday Night in 1992. While Friend turned down the guitarist's request to go on the radio when DeVille called the studio, he recorded the irate call. For months, metalheads and radio insiders shared audio recordings of the debate. DeVille rejoined his former band in 1996 for MTV News. But due to artistic differences, he left Poison again after a summer tour in 1999. Brett Michaels has some serious illnesses. In April 2010, Brett Michaels experienced a series of frightening and possibly catastrophic medical issues. Michaels was about to take the stage for a concert in San Antonio early in the month when he suddenly became quite ill. He was going to perform nonetheless but was ultimately brought to a nearby hospital where he underwent an urgent appendectomy. Only two weeks later, while recovering at home, Michaels heard something that sounded like a revolver. It wasn't a bullet making the loud, popping noise, it was an inside sound. Michaels requested to be taken to a hospital when he realized he was unable to move his head, think clearly, or speak properly. There, a severe subarachnoid hemorrhage, or bleeding at the base of the brainstem, was identified by medical professionals. Michaels was given a critical condition rating while medical professionals identified and addressed the source of the bleeding. Michaels recovered completely after spending some time in a physical therapy center. 
Brett Michaels, wasn't quite out of the woods medically after the Tony Awards crash, emergency appendectomy, and brain hemorrhage in quick succession in 2009 and 2010. While shooting, Michaels noticed that his left side of his body was becoming more and more numb. He stopped immediately and went back to the hospital in Arizona where he had received treatment for the hemorrhage. Michaels was diagnosed with patent foramen oval in May 2010 by medical professionals, PFO. Simply put, it's a tiny hole in the heart that develops while a baby is in the womb and aids in blood circulation, it almost always closes up after birth, but not always. A blood clot that started in Michael's PFO and eventually made its way to his brain caused a transient ischemic attack, or stroke, when the singer was in his late 40s. Michael successfully underwent surgery to permanently close and repair the hole in his heart a few months later, in January 2011. Alcoholism and C.C. DeVille engaged in a protracted and frequently public battle. Satchel, the guitarist for the semi-ironic throwback hair metal band Steel Panther, allegedly related the story of an intoxicated DeVille who attempted to play a set behind the drum kit rather than on the guitar. Satchel stated, we actually had to have security forcibly remove him. DeVille, though, stopped drinking in 2006. DeVille remarked, in a blackout while driving, I ran over four parked cars. The police discovered me crawling two blocks away after I totaled my automobile. Fortunately, I only got into enough difficulty to wake up, and not enough to have to live with the guilt of killing someone for the rest of my life. Bobby Dahl battled alcoholism and drug addiction. For certain members of the hair metal scene, such as longtime Poison bassist Bobby Dahl, the numerous pre-show parties, backstage parties, and after-concert parties grew out of hand. During Poison's peak, the musician drank copiously, and one instance has been documented for posterity. In the music video for Every Rose Has Its Thorn, he is so drunk that he can't stand up straight. There's a scene where you see me and I fall down and I'm literally being lifted up by my guy who worked for me at the time, the actor said. I am wasted and inebriated in the moment. That is authentic. Dahl entered a drug and alcohol rehab center in 1993, and he now describes himself as a recovering alcoholic and drug abuser. Poison members commonly engaged in fights with other poison members. Along with the benefits of being in a popular band, stresses such as artistic differences, the demands of traveling, or interpersonal conflicts might affect the band members. For Poison, that strain frequently resulted in physical altercations. Singer Brett Michaels spoke about the time he and guitarist C.C. DeVille got into a fight at a sports bar in New Orleans in 2015 on Fox Sports Radio's Steve Gorman Sports show, via Loudwire. When they returned to the hotel after being physically separated, they began fighting again. DeVille gave a terrible, error-filled performance during Poison's 1991 MTV Video Music Awards performance, and as a result, the guitarist and Michaels fought. In Atlanta in 2006, Poison performed for a crowd that received an additional, non-musical encore. After arguing verbally, bassist Bobby Dahl and singer Michaels started hitting one other. Monsters and critics claim that when Michaels threw his microphone Dahl drove his bass into Michaels' knee. Ricky Rocket had throat cancer. In June of that year, Rocket went to the doctor because of a bad sore throat. An oral cancer diagnosis was made after a biopsy at USC Medical Center, namely a malignant tumor at the drummer's tongue base that had migrated to two surrounding lymph nodes. 
Rocket underwent 35 rounds of radiation treatment after 9 rounds of severe chemotherapy, which is fortunate because this type of cancer is very treatable. There were side effects like a rash and so many canker sores that it hurt to sip water. Rocket also revealed that the human papillomavirus, or HPV, was likely a factor in the development of his tongue cancer. When he initially caught that infection, the doctor thought that it was 15, 20 years ago, Rocket was given the all-clear in July 2016, little over a year after his initial diagnosis. Poison has been sued more than once. With legal disputes spanning almost the entirety of its career, Poison may be one of the most litigated rock bands in music history. According to the Los Angeles Times, Brett Michaels and Bobby Dahl of Poison dumped beer and ice water on Bryn Breidenfall Houseman in 1987, leading to her filing a formal criminal complaint and a $1.1 million lawsuit against the two men. This occurred at an after-show party. Soon after, management firm Sanctuary Media and Poison filed separate lawsuits against one another, seeking $45.5 million in damages for alleged contract breaches. The band retaliated by charging financial mismanagement. A band with a moniker that is extremely similar to another, much more well-known group was sued in 2011 for allegedly stealing some of Poison's best songs more than 20 years prior. The Hollywood Reporter claims that C.C. DeVille, the guitarist for Poison, tried out for Kid Rocker in 1984. He received a recording of their songs from band members Billy McCarthy and James Stonick, which they think DeVille later stole and used as the inspiration for four Poison songs, including, Talk Dirty To Me, and, I Won't Forget You. The lawsuit, which was filed in federal court in Illinois, accused Poison, Capitol Records, and Emmy Music of copyright infringement. In 2013, it was dismissed.